Okay, welcome to the very first sportsciencetutor.com tutorial on using SPSS in order to perform statistical analyses for your sport and exercise science research. It's actually quite easy to run analyses on SPSS so long as you do set up your data in just the right way. The key thing is to know where to look for relevant information once you've run your analyses because the subsequent output that SPSS provides you with does tend to give you a lot more information than you really need. But before we get into that, I want this tutorial really to focus on just the data entry into the data editor. And when you open up SPSS, you are presented with this data editor as we are here. And the key things, the basics to have an awareness of, uh, relate to the different view modes in the data editor. And these two view modes are the data view and the variable view. Um, we're currently on data view, which we can tell by going down to the bottom of the screen here and seeing that data view is highlighted in bold. If we were to move the cursor over to variable view here and click on that, we can see things obviously change. But going back to data view, this is essentially just a big spreadsheet with a series of columns and rows. And each row is dedicated to a particular subject or a particular case. And each column is dedicated to a particular variable. Now, if I were to type in some data, which I'm going to do now just by copying and pasting just to save some time, we can see that the column um, that, that represents a particular cell has been assigned a specific name. Uh, variable 1, variable 2, variable 3, variable 4. The trouble is that's not really very informative and very helpful um, and has the potential to cause a certain amount of confusion. And so we really need to go to variable view and change those names to something that's more descriptive. So if we go back down to the variable view button at the bottom of the screen again and click on this and then head over to this first column titled name, we can click on the different cells and start assigning the variables with more descriptive names. For example, this first cell, I might want to type in age, for example. And now we have a more descriptive name for that particular variable. The one thing to bear in mind, though, is that you can't use spaces in your variable names. You can't have special characters and the variable names uh, can't begin with numbers either. So if I were to type in body mass, for example, um, and have a space in between body and mass and then press return, we find that this... Uh, box comes up here and says variable name contains an illegal character. We don't really need to worry about this too much. If that happens, just click OK and try and tweak it in some way so that it's going to be more acceptable to SPSS. So in this case, I might type in body mass again, but instead of a space, I'm going to have an underscore in between body and mass. Press return. SPS is quite happy with that. And so if my next variable were VO2 max, I might decide to do the same thing. Um, I might type in VO2, and then rather than have a space, I'll do another underscore before typing in max. And SPSS doesn't have a problem with that. And say my final variable was gender, that should be pretty straightforward. There's no special characters there, there's no numbers or spaces, and all is fine there. And then if I were to head back to data view by clicking on the button there, we can see that I now have more descriptive, more informative variable names, which should help prevent a lot of confusion. But Besides changing these variable names to something more descriptive, there are a number of other properties in variable view that we may need to change. For example, if we go over to the gender variable here, we can see that instead of each cell stating whether or not a particular subject is male or female, we've got numbers, we've got ones and we've got twos. And the reason for this is because... Um, 
SPSS needs to deal with numbers. And so in instances where we have variables that involve placing subjects into discrete groups, such as male or female, we need to use numerical values in order to represent those different groups. So a one might represent males and a two might represent females. The trouble is this again has the potential to get a little bit confusing. Maybe I can't quite remember was a one a male, was it a female? Or did it, it was two female? I, I can't quite remember. And so it's gonna be useful to head back over to variable view um, and head over to the values column in order to assign more descriptive or to assign descriptive labels uh, to these numerical values. And so in this case, we want to um, click on the cell that corresponds to gender, click on this little bit here, and we can now type in a number one in this value box and perhaps one was the number we were using to represent males and so we type in male here click on add and so two was probably representing females and so we can type in female here for number two click on add click OK and then if we head back over to data view again we can see that we have more descriptive labels um, in here to represent um, those numerical values and we can click back and forth between the numerical values just by clicking on this button here and we can click between them as we please um, so that we know what um, the different numbers represent. Now there's a number of other variable properties that we might want to alter in variable view as well besides um, uh, making these labels more informative and so that's going to be the subject for our next SPSS tutorial uh, with sportsciencetutor.com.